All right, guys, we should be live now. We haven't done a drafters draft on video for a while, so we are going to do that today. Let's get it, man. Excited to get after it with you. Um, and yeah, maybe add an extra hitter today so we can potentially draft Otani. Don't they? I think they usually give you his availability in pitching, don't they? Well, yeah, but I don't think you get it. Like, you have to draft him as a pitcher unless you add a hitter. I don't think you get his points. I know someone took him last time, but I don't know if they got his points. All right, so just like a plain hitter? Yeah, I think so. Because it's like adding the DH, but like, it's not, you don't have to be an actual DH, you know? All right, pitching's kind of ugly today. Should we do two, though? There's only five of us. <laughs> yeah. Let's get weird with it. Ugly All right. For everyone, right? What's up? I, I like because it's ugly for everyone. And also, it really, when you add the second pitcher, it changes up draft strategy. For, like, you know, it makes it. So the guy who has the last pick has, has, you know, more options, you know? Definitely. All right. We got you, Huggy, Steve, Sakura. Send these bad boys out and we'll get rolling. If you haven't started playing on drafters yet, you should. Uh, our promo code is DFS5Pack. If you could use it, that would be great. Otherwise, if you just want to start playing with us, there's a link to a Facebook group below. You can just join that. Anybody can join that. That's where we post that we're having drafts, and people just choose if they can play that day or not. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm excited to get after it. We haven't done one of these in a while. It's been a few days. We haven't done one on video in a while. I think we only got to one or two of these last week. So. I know. I'm trying to join. Yeah. So not letting you join? Yeah, I'm clicking join, and for some reason it's not like open up like drafters again. Can I see the invite? Well, uh, am I the last one? Everyone else in? Yeah, everyone else is in. I'm going to try to join on my phone because for some reason it is not letting me join on my computer. So give me one second. I have, I have no idea why. I just tried sending you the link too, so I don't know if that'll work. It should be in now. There we go. And are we back to screen sharing the actual drafters draft too? Can you see? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't hate the number one pick today. You got it. Oh, so I haven't gotten the number one pick in a long time, so I'm happy about that one. Do you remember when we first started doing these like really yeah. often again? I was in like the number one pick like all of the time. It has been months now since I've had like the top pick. And that's just your numbers evening out over time, right? Like just because you're always getting it right away, like you're probably – that's not going to keep going forever. So uh, I had him a bunch, but it's been forever since I've been up there. Yeah, I think that the top two obviously today mean a lot. So pretty clear I'm going to take Peralta number one and, and be happy with it. Yeah, I would too. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. That's exactly what I would like. And I would just be a little bit jealous because there is a dip in starting pitching. Like for me, with the fifth pick, like, if it goes Peralta, Giolito, Bauer, Granke, there's real cases for me to make that I just wait on pitching, period. For sure. I'm with that. Any update on the weather in Chicago or we don't know? I have not looked. I know that though it started raining here, which has me a little bit worried. Anyway, about 30 more seconds till we'll get rolling. We know the number one pick is going to be Freddie Peralta, which, again, I, I think is – I'm with you. It's the right move on this one for sure. Uh, they got Giolito above Bauer. I, I, I guess I understand that. Yeah, I mean, all three of those guys seem to be the top three by a good amount. So I don't think you could go wrong with Peralta or Bauer as the top two. All right, three, two, one, blast off. Here goes Freddie Peralta, number one overall. Let's do it. 
Papa Steve often takes a hitter. I think he will take a pitcher, Jay, yeah. though. I'm just guessing. I think he'll go Bauer, yeah. It's just too – it's the drop-off's too real. I'm with you on that. I do feel like you almost have to take a pitcher, but, again, you don't have to do anything. It's hard when you have that last pick and you don't have – Agreed. Ooh, Huggy Bear. Interesting. All right. Grab a hitter. I'm going to go just have some fun with offense. I don't like any pitchers enough. I'm just waiting. I respect that. I think a lot of people, oh, uh, yeah, Joe Sakura took Hendricks. I was going to say, Hendricks is the one guy I would have taken, but. I completely get not, you know, not using a pick on them. I also am going to watch some of the Brewers, uh, Brewers Cubs game today. I want to root for Milwaukee's offense, so I don't want to be locked into rooting for Kyle Hendricks, which again doesn't mean that's the right move for the game. It's just, you know, I'm also a fan, and I want to have a little bit of fun with this. Sure, he can still pitch well in Milwaukee. Win, though. keep that. Yeah, but I want Milwaukee to roll, baby, and I don't want to be rooting against it. So it's probably not the right move to skip Hendricks. I was also looking at him, but I'm going to be cheering against him today, and I don't want to have uh, interfering reasons to look at it. I completely get it. Um, like, there's no nothing argument. worse than year-long fantasy. Like, for you, if, like, your guy that you're playing against for the championship has Nick Chubb. Truth. No doubt. You know what? The weather's fine. Give me J Ram. And give me. <clears throat> Man, honestly, I, I don't know about the weather, but pitching options are so bad. Give me my Ada. Kenta. I mean, the pitching options are atrocious. This is true. You always got Dylan Bundy you can take a look at right there. He's amazing. No, thank you. That's fair. Real fair. And the Yankees just got embarrassed by the Red Sox. Yeah. Oh, man. Nice pick there, Huggy Bear. I was going to take Brian Reynolds. Who's Pittsburgh playing? Colorado. Oh, yeah, in cores. Yes. I forgot about that. Yes, I get that. What's Philly have on the mound today? You remember? Spencer Howard. Oh, interesting. Pink. When you throw in these afternoon games, like when you only evaluate DraftKings for the nighttime, and then you throw in these afternoon games, you're kind of just, uh, if you haven't looked at them very closely, you're just kind of running by the seat of your pants. Definitely. I mean, I've forgotten that that Pittsburgh was in core, so absolutely. So you got Coors Field. You also have two of the worst offenses in baseball playing there. I was wondering why you took Story so early, but now I get it. I just wanted an upside play. If I'm going to play for with no pitching on this one, I want all guys that have the ability to give me a big game. Yeah, I mean, I hate that. No arguments. Still be curious. I saw something on the front of ESPN today, and it's probably, the, I mean, not probably. It's because, you know, ESPN allows you to like your favorite team. So mine are all the Wisconsin teams. And they were saying Trevor Story would be the perfect fit in Milwaukee. And I'm like, I've been saying that for a while. Clearly, this guy needs to get any moving on. Like, we could use a big bat in the middle of our lineup, and he would be perfect. The problem is, now that they have, you know, they like Willie Adamas at shortstop, uh, and you got Urias. I mean, what do you do here? You move on from Urias? Like, is there any value for Colorado to take him? Probably not a ton. Yeah, I mean, I feel like those guys are secondary if you can get a guy like Story. But, well, I mean, my pick, um, man, struggle. He's back with Bryce Harper. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel honestly it'd probably be a deal for prospects, but you'd find a place for story, whether it's, you know, move one of those guys to third, move to third base 
story plays second. Um, that's how I would probably see it, I think. Mm-hmm. He'd be a perfect fit for Milwaukee. They need a big bat in the middle of that lineup, especially a right-handed guy with power like that. I mean, he would look real good. He's always hit well in Miller Park. That's, that's still the name of it in my mind. Uh, 100% agreed. All right. Who wins tonight, Clips or Suns? I, th- I think the Clips win. I mean, I think it's going to be a real close game. won't be surprised either way, but I'm going to give the Clippers the benefit of the doubt here. I've been on them a lot. I'm not, I'm not ready to say they go home yet. I mean, my ultimate goal here is obviously for the Bucks to win the championship. I want the Clippers to beat down on the Suns right now because I want this thing. I want Take something out of one another, please. Great. Let's make Paul George play 48 minutes per game for the next couple of games. Seriously. And then the Clippers come back from down 3-1, and he's got nothing left for the finals. I mean, that's my dream scenario. I don't care if the pass is easy for Milwaukee. To be the man, you have to beat the man? Cool. We'll do that next year. I agree. I mean, listen, yeah, as, as easy as, as the title can get, that's what you want. I mean, no doubt. Like we say, no one's going to remember it years from now. Right. I mean, there is always, like I said, do you give LeBron extra credit for coming back from down 3-1 to that Golden State team? Yeah, I do. I do think like a title like that for me is worth like multiple Kevin Durant titles. You know what I mean? Where he joins up with the 73-9 and team. And yes, he was awesome in the finals, but that was a pretty easy place to succeed as far as like the finals are concerned. So like I just, in my mind, LeBron's comeback against the Warriors is worth a lot more than one of KD's titles. Yes, but it's really not, though. But it is I mean, to me. And it, I think it's a subjective thing that all sports fans can look at it a little bit differently. Like, I look at that as, like, a, that did something for LeBron's legacy that the KD titles don't do quite the same. I get that. I mean, I, I, I have no argument to that. At the end of the day, you know, 20, 30 years from now, though, it'll be like, I think this guy's got this many, this guy's got that many, personally. Right? Like, I mean, if you break down, like, all the Tom Brady Super Bowls, for me, like, the, the one against Atlanta – did a lot more for my belief in Tom Brady than the one against the Rams. I get that. I have no arguments. All right. Well, I'm going to take some Wade Miley, as ugly as these pitching options are. You got to use someone, right? Oh, yeah. I think, like, he's by far the best option here, which is disgusting. And now I'm stuck choosing between Eli Morgan and Desclafani, so I'll go with Desclafani. Yeah, I feel like that's the smart move there. I am loaded at pitcher today, fellas. Desclafani against the Dodgers and Wade Miley. Hey, you never know. It's baseball. It could easily turn out your way here. DJ Still, one of the biggest disappointments this year has been DJ LeMahieu. I think we talked about this last week. I play a bunch of auction year-long leagues, and I consistently got outbid for DJ LeMahieu. And uh, now I want to thank those guys who spent all this extra money to get him away from me because it's just not his year. Yeah, no, it's not. Not even a little bit. I'm a monster DJ LeMahieu fan. He's definitely one of my favorite Yankees ever. I just I, I like his game. I respect the way he plays. Yeah. Except for this year. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Although, he's, there's still time for him to turn around. All right, I'm going to take the leadoff hitter in corners. Eric Gonzalez just came out. So nice to see that. And what? I'll take the... Other one? No. I'd like Christian Walker all day. I'm not getting off now. What's the Papa Steve do? He took Bauer, and now he's waiting on this next pitcher. He'll wait till the end then. Yeah, there really is no pitcher to let you feel good about it at all. I mean, no. 
I mean, I liked Miley and Desclafani better than the other guys left, but let's not pretend like I liked them. Like is a very strong word. Interesting that the Pirates, I wish, I wish the Pirates game was on the slate tonight. Yeah, I get that. No arguments here. All right. Not realizing I now have Muncie and Bellinger against my pitcher. So in a perfect world, Desclafani goes six strong and Muncie and Belly Homer late. I'm not asking for too much. Two solo homers, I completely agree. <laughs> That's the nice thing about something like this, too. Like, I mean, there's only four other people you have to beat, so that really doesn't matter. Yeah, it's much easier than getting to the mountaintop of the DraftKings GPP. Yep. All right, you got a World Series favorite right now? A World Series favorite. Uh, I think that in the NL, man, it's got to be San Diego, uh, I think, for me. And then in the AL, um, hmm, that's a good one. Uh, I don't really. I mean, I think the Astros are probably the best team, but I don't love their pitching. I like the White Sox a lot. If they can get Robert and and Jimenez back, yeah, I think that it could be a, a White Sox Astros World Series. I don't think the White Sox have amazing pitching, but their pitching is pretty damn good with Giolito, Cease, Lynn, Rodone. So it's about as good as it gets in the AL at least. I think they're my favorite team. Yeah, I, other than the Astros, who do seem like they are, and again, what's up with Justin Verlander? The thing about the Astros, though, like, we, they've been there, so I trust them. Like, a lot of teams, like these, like the White Sox, they're not in the greatest year. I don't know if I trust their offense to hit. They've got great hitters, and they could, but the Astros are proven. So I think they're still the, the, the proverbial team to beat. The Rays are right up, too. Yeah, I just, I love what the Rays do as an organization, right? Like they were so pathetic for so long, but over the last, whatever, it's been like 10 years. Like they find ways to be competitive every year. Like you look up and down their lineup and, you know, throughout their pitching staff, they shouldn't be as good as they are, but they always continue to find ways to win. And it's just very respectable, you know, small market, like real small, like no fans, terrible ballpark, yet they find ways to be competitive among those big, big boy Red Sox and Yankees, like that's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, man, I also think that, uh, what was I about to say? Uh, I lost my train of thought, but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, with, I'm with you. The, the thing about the Astros losing glass now hurts them. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. The Red Sox, I think, are a sleeper, especially if they get any sort of Chris Sale that's like the Chris Sale of old. I was going to say the problem with the Astros then is, is worse than the Red Sox, right? Like that pitching staff is not – like there's nothing scary about going up against any of the Red Sox starters if you're in a seven-game series with them. I'm like, oh, ooh. You're not you right. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're going to toss Nady Evaldi at me? Oh, I don't think we can get to him. They definitely would need sale and to make another, and to make another move to be serious contenders, but they're good. Yeah, I mean, regular season teams – I, do, what do you think is going to happen with the Giants? Like, do you think the Giants fade in the second half? Like, I struggle to see them keeping this up. It's been a great story, and they're good, right? Like, this is definitely their winners. They got a nice, you know, front of the lineup with uh, Kevin Gossman, who's been pitching like a Cy Young all year. But you look at that lineup, and even the pitching staff as a whole, and you're like, this. You, you got to have some regression, you would think, and you got to, you know, play the Dodgers and the Padres over and over again. I think they'll end up finishing in third in the NL West. So do I. It is so hard to look at their roster and then look at the roster of the Dodgers and the Padres and be like, oh, yeah, totally makes sense that they're ahead of them in the standings. The Giants roster look like any of the other good baseball. The Dodgers and Padres look like the best teams in baseball, with Houston probably. Their, their, their roster is just absurd. Yeah, no doubt. All right, guys. Well, anyways, that's Drafters. A little baseball talk for the day. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys.